All right, I think I got it going now. All right. Let me make sure it's turned off so it don't start beeping at us or something. Yeah. All right, Exodus chapter 9, uh, verse 26. And we're picking it up. You know, we're right in, we finished right in the middle of the, of the plagues that the Lord was sending to, uh, to Egypt. And uh, the last one, if you back up one verse, you'll see that the last one was hail. The smoke, uh, verse 25 says, hail smoked throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb and every, of the field and break every tree of the field. And it says, and then verse 26 says, only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. And so the Lord was, Making it obvious that he was that he was punishing, bringing judgment upon Egypt, and not on Israel. Now, this is a good example of what uh, you might say a good example of what uh, what I say that and what we've said many times before is when the Lord brings judgment, and this is judgment upon Egypt, and judgment upon Egypt. Uh, Egypt, you know, like I've said before, Egypt is like a a, a symbol or a. a, a a picture of your of, of the world and I believe here again you see that that the Lord is bringing judgment upon the upon the work on the world through you might say through Egypt but he's also sparing the his people from that judgment now what that what that means to us um, I'm not exactly sure other than I do believe that this is a good example of the fact that when the Lord does bring judgment, he don't bring judgment upon his people. He brings judgment upon the world and those that are, are against him and his kingdom. Uh, and I, I definitely believe that we will be kept from the hour of judgment. I believe personally, uh, and I, you know I've said this many times before, that I believe that we will be removed in the rapture prior to the, the, the true judgment. Judgment hadn't come to the earth yet. There's some, there's some uh, jack legs out there that are saying that we're already in the tribulation. That's not true. We're not there yet. But there is issues that the Lord is, is dealing with in the world today. But when the judgment comes, it won't be, it, it, it will be uh, as clear as crystal to the world that judgment is coming to them. Uh, and, and if, and, uh, it may be that we will see some of that judgment before the Lord raptures us up, just like the the land the the children of Israel here saw these plagues that were taking place. Uh, but yet uh, the Lord kept keeps them from this this judgment. Now we see that in verse in this verse twenty six, there was no hell in the land of Goshen. Land of Goshen was is where the the uh, Israelites were at, and so I believe uh, if. If I'm wrong and the rapture don't take place before the judgment, then then I believe that that if we're here, the Lord will separate us. He will do just like He did the these figs here. They, the judgment won't occur to them. Uh, I, there's several different ways to look at that. One another way is that we're we're His people uh, and we're the bride of Christ according to Scripture. And it sounds awful funny that the Lord would bring judgment on His bride. Uh, that don't make sense either. Uh, it's just like, kind of like a guy beating up his his, his fiance before they get married. That's just basically what that would be, and it don't make any sense. So I believe again that uh, that we will not partake of the judgment uh, if we are a part of His kingdom, if we are a part of His family. Uh, we will be spared in some form or fashion. Now I personally believe it will be through the rapture. But anyhow, verse 27, the Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. Lord, uh, the Lord is righteous and I and, and I and my people are wicked. Well, he's confessing here. Uh, he's confessing that, he, that they did wrong. Uh, but does he really mean it? We're going to see that here in a minute. Entreat the Lord for, this, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail. And I will set you, uh, let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. 
All right, and then Moses, uh, of course, he, he says that we've heard this before, but he's even more certain of it now, you might say, than before. He's, gonna let that, uh, he's wanting the, the Lord to let his people go, or he's wanting to let the people go to worship the Lord, I should say. And then but Moses says unto him, verse 29, as soon as I am gone out of the city, I will sp spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hell, that thou mayest know uh, how that the earth is the Lord's. And so you see here again, uh, Moses is making it clear that that the the reason for these plagues, and the reason that, of course, he's, he don't say it here, but the reason he has hardened Pharaoh's heart is so that the judgments will be obvious that they're coming from God, uh, that, uh, that there won't be any question about who is in charge. And, and you see, he, here he had, uh, in the previous verse, uh, uh, Pharaoh had admitted it, uh, that, that he was the Lord, that he was the God, and that, and that uh, 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 he, had, he had been wicked. Him, he and his people had been wicked, and the Lord was God. And uh, so Moses says, when I get back to my land, I'll stretch out my arms and, and, and to the Lord, and, and, the, and it will stop. Uh, and he says, the reason that know how that, that, uh, that thou mayest know how the earth, that the earth is the Lord's. In other words, he's going to, he's saying that, that, that you will know that the Lord is in charge of all, all creation. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. And Moses said, I know that this is not going to end good. I know that this is, you're not, you're not going to, you're not really serious about what you're saying. That's what Mo Moses says to you, to you, Pharaoh. And the flax and the barley were, were smitten. For the barley was in the ear, and the flax was was boiled, uh, but the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. In other words, they, the wheat and the rye hadn't come up yet, but the flax and the barley uh, were. Uh, and Moses went out of the city, and f from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord. And the thundering, the thunders and the hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. Uh, there was a little discussion, I think, the last time about how long this uh, this may have taken. I don't know. Uh, the scripture don't really say, but this is just my opinion uh, uh, about what I think it took place over a period of between, uh, possibly between uh, uh, the feast. That's when it took place, uh, between the, the beginning of the spring feast to the end of the fall feast, and it's very well possible that they uh, that, that they were finally released at the fall feast in the in the fall. But I'm, or it could have been vice versa. Uh, either, irregardless, uh, the Lord released them, I believe, in a in a period a period of time uh, that uh, was was specific for Him. Uh, any questions so far? It says, Moses went out uh, of the city from Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord and the thunders and the hell ceased and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hell and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would, would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Moses. And so Moses told him that he, wouldn't, he knew that he wouldn't let them go, and that's exactly what he did. Once the hell and the, and, the, and the judgment, that particular judgment had come to an end, uh, then, uh, then the Lord, then, excuse me, then Pharaoh hardened his heart again. <coughs> Any comments? We're getting close to the last one, the judgment. Actually, it's not the last one, but we'll, we will look at it. Uh, let's go ahead and ch go to turn with me to chapter 10. And if you don't have any questions or anything you'd like to say. Verse 1 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, 
that I might show thee my sign before him, my signs before him, and that thou might mayest tell the ears of thy son and of thy son's sons what things I have wrought in Egypt, and may and, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord God. Now this is something. This is a uh, the Lord telling Moses, but also keep in mind that that's exactly what uh, uh, what the Jews have been doing for the last three thousand plus years. They've been with their with the Seder meal. They tell uh, their children. Uh, one of the things about the Seder meal that is that is important, I believe, is is the children. Again, I, I, I know we've done the Seder meal here a few times. But, but the uh, the real place that the Seder meal should take place is in the home, with uh, with your your family, should be uh, uh, sit around the table and and have the the Passover meal there, and and what a part of that a part of that meal is uh, is going over the plagues, like I think I've said before, one of the the rituals that the head of the house should do. Was he would when they had the cup of wine or grape juice, however you want to look at it, he put he put it usually a little finger. He put the finger in the cup and drop a a drop of blood on the plate or a, a blood of a drop of, of the wine on the plate. And each time they would do that, they would name one of the plagues uh, that were that were sent upon that were set upon Egypt and many other things. They talked about the bitter herbs and why they were in bondage and. And what they, they their forefathers had to make brick and so forth, all that is pictured is explained to the children in the Passover meal, and that's what he's saying here. Tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's sons uh, what things I have wrought in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how I am the Lord God. In other words, that you'll know, that you won't forget, that you will remember what the Lord has done for you here in Egypt uh, in sending these plagues. And uh, uh, remember also that Paul said that everything, I believe it was Paul said, everything that happened in Egypt and everything that happened to Moses and the children is a picture of, of what, uh, I didn't say it that, I'm just paraphrasing you might say, uh, but he said that that's a picture or a symbol or a pattern of what uh, what the Lord will do for you or has done for us in uh, taking our punishment, taking our plagues. Uh, look at this number of things that happened to Jesus. He was, he was beat. He was uh, uh, scourged. Uh, he was uh, made fun of. They struck him with a, stri uh, uh, a rod. Uh, uh, that he, was, he was nailed on the cross. He forced, he forced to carry that cross nailed on the cross in his hands and feet, put a crown of thorns on his head. All that was a, a symbol of, of him taking the punishment just like uh, that, that, that we deserve. And finally, of course, a, a, a spear was stuck in his side to prove that he had died. And so just as, uh, just as Jesus was the Passover lamb, we're going to look here probably in the next, next verses, uh, the Passover lamb that took place. Uh, here in Egypt. But anyhow, verse 3 says, And Moses and Aaron came unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Uh, and all this, it's the same thing that God says to Satan when we come into his kingdom. Let my people go that they might serve me. That's what he says says to Satan for us that we are to be set free uh, and made a bond and that we become a bond servant that we might serve him in his kingdom but anyhow verse 4 says else if thou refuse to let my people go behold behold tomorrow I will bring the locusts unto the coast and they shall cover the face of the earth uh, that one cannot be able to see the earth and they shall eat the residue of that which is, is escaped which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fly thy, fill thy houses and thy 
houses and the houses of all thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth, upon this day. And he turned himself and went out of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the man go, that they may serve the Lord thy God. Knowest thou not yet uh, that Egypt is destroyed? In other words, this is what the servants said to Pharaoh. They're, they're, they're beginning to learn the lesson. And even the, even, the, even the servants say that we need to let him go. Moses and Aaron brought again, again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go serve thy Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, we will, we will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds, uh, will we go, and for we must hold the feast unto the Lord. And, and he said unto, said unto them, Let the Lord uh, be so with you, as I will let you go, and your little ones look to, look to it for evil, is before you not so go now ye that are men and serve the lord for that ye shall desire for that ye, sh ye des did desire and they were driven out from the presence of pharaoh in other words what he's saying is you're gonna you can go but you you have to let your your children and so forth the way i read it that stay behind and the lord said unto moses stretch out uh stretch out your hand over the land of egypt uh, for the locusts that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land that all the hail hath left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt and the Lord brought the east wind upon the land uh, all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and, and re rested in the coast of Egypt. Every grievous, very grievous were they. Before they, before them, there was no such locust as they, uh, neither after them shall be such. In other words, this was the worst locust they had ever seen, and there never be another one as bad as this one, according to Egypt, according to what he says here. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat the herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left, and they remained not any green thing in the trees nor in the herbs of the fields throughout all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called for Moses and in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore forgive, therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin upon this upon excuse me, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me uh, this death only. I'm gonna get my mouth dry. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. Uh, there remained not one locust in the, in the coast of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out, stretch out thy hand toward the heaven, that there may be not darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. That's, that's pretty dark. If it's so dark that you can feel it. It's pretty dark. You know, uh, I just, I, this is just a sideline. But there is, there is matter. It's called dark matter. It's called dark matter. And there's more dark matter in the universe. According to, according to physicists, there's more dark matter in the universe than there is uh, the matter that we see. Uh, and that, uh, uh, that may be what I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. Maybe that's the darkness that they felt. They actually felt that dark matter. The, the, it was so dark in their sight. But anyhow, uh, Moses stretched forth his hand toward the heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. 
they saw not one another, neither rose any of his any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. In other words, again, the, the children of Israel were spared. It didn't mention it about the locusts, but I bet the locusts were also uh, didn't go into the land of Goshen. It was just the uh, it was just the uh, uh, land of Egypt. And Moses called, into, excuse me, and Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds stay. Let the little ones also go with you. So now he's, he's lit up a little bit. He said, now you can take your little ones, but you have to leave your flocks and herds behind uh, and, go, and go worship. Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord. In other words, we're saying it. They need the, the flocks and herds, is what he's saying. Our cattle also, go with, also sh shall go with us. There shall not one hoof be left behind. For therefore must we take, uh, take to serve the Lord our God, and we, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come hither. In other words, he's saying we don't know what we're going to need. We know we're going to go and sacrifice to the Lord, but we don't know. Are we going to need, are we going to need uh, sheep or goats or what's the, or uh, are we going to need cattle? What what kind of offering are we going? We're going to know, and we won't know until we get, until we get there. Is basically what he's saying. Uh, <clears throat> and Moses said, "Thou hast spoken. Well, I will see thy face again no more." Uh, Moses said, "He's in, he's not going to come against him again." Uh, and. Uh, I think we're getting close to the, the last the last plague, but Moses hears the, the after the the darkness. Uh, he said, "You won't, I won't see in our face anymore." Uh, any comments or anything on this chapter? This is a quick chapter. We have still got plenty of time. If I can get it to move to the next, when I want it to go to the next chapter, it won't go. There we go. <coughs> And the Lord said unto Moses, verse 1, The Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. Uh, when he shall let you go, ye shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. In other words, this, one, this last plague is going to cause him to let everything, let you all go. In fact, uh, we'll, we'll see what, what all they are able to do when he tells them to get out after this last plague. Speak now to the ears of the, of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, uh, the, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, thus, that, thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn of the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservants that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of the beast. And, they, and there shall be a great cry throughout the all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall it uh, be like it any more. You remember what uh, Pharaoh tried to do uh, before when Moses was born? He's trying to have all the male children put to death. It didn't happen. But your God has given them back a hundredfold. You might say what they was trying to do to the to the. Uh, to the Egyptians, uh, but he says there it's going to strike all of them, even the not only the servants, but it's going to strike the first firstborn of the beast and the field and everything. Uh, and it says that there was such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. The uh, the um, uh, plague just he's about to bring on. And against any of the children of Israel shall not the dog move his tongue against any against man or beast. They, uh, yea, but, excuse me, that ye may know how that the Lord doth 
put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And these thy servants shall come down upon thee uh, and, and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Let thy, get thee out and all the people that follow thee. And after that, I will go out. And he, and he went out from Pharaoh in, a, in great anger. And he's saying that uh, Pharaoh, I mean, that uh, uh, all, all, that all this is going to take place with, and, and, it's, and it's going to be, well, it's going to be worse than anything that they've seen before. And uh, the, it says not, has not has happened on the face of the earth since. But he's going to he's going to bring them about to bring it about to all of, all of Egypt and everything everything that takes place. It says, and he went out from Pharaoh in great anger, and the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that, you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his of the land. And so <coughs> Pharaoh continues to harden Pharaoh's heart here, even before, even when the Lord is going to take the firstborn of all their, of, of everything. Uh, Pharaoh didn't listen. Now go to chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall, shall be unto you the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, this is interesting because I said, remember I said a while ago that I believe that probably this, this, these, these plagues took place over the period, over the feast periods. Um, remember, you got three, three spring, three spring feasts, and then you've got the feast of uh, Shavuot or Pat, or, or uh, uh, Pentecost, we call it, and then you've got three fall feasts that take place in the fall, and so you got seven total feasts. Uh, of course, you need. Uh, I believe that what he's saying here, this he said that this month. When this plague plague is going to take pl place, it's going to be the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year unto you. Now, the first there's a there's a uh, believe it or not, the Jews today have two New Years. They've got a, a New Year, which is the, the the physical New Year, which takes place in uh, the, the the month of Nisan. I believe is the first month that begins the. The, the spring feast uh, that's that's the the first of the year that starts usually on, on our calendar it usually would take place mid-february somewhere in that neighborhood because remember their days don't match our calendar but uh, it would take place probably in the late latter february or early march in that period of time uh, the first the first thing today that happens in, is the uh, is the uh feast of, uh, uh, well, it's not really a feast. It's a celebration of, of the book of Esther, but I won't get into all that. But anyhow, you got one one new year then at the beginning of the year. And then you then here, know, though, the Lord is setting another year, another first of the year. It says, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year to you. So now I believe that this is the, this is a, uh, uh, begins the fall feast. I believe it begin, this is the seventh month on the Jewish calendar uh, uh, that they take this, and that's the beginning of the fall feast. So you got a new year at the beginning of the spring feast, and you've got a new year at the beginning of the fall feast. You see, you see what I'm saying? And so, and so you got these two different periods of time. Uh, and I believe you, you also, also you probably when you read the, the old in the Old Testament. It talks about the early and the latter rains. Uh, the early rains actually is the rains in the fall. When you plant in the fall, you know, you plant some falls and, and for it to come up early in the spring. So that's the early early rains. And then the, the latter rains would be in the, in the spring. It's kind of strange, it sounds backwards. But from what I understand, that's the way, they, that's the way it is. But anyhow, this month, the seventh month, shall be to you uh, the first month of the year to you. 
So they consider the seventh month to be the beginning uh, of the of the new year for the Jews in in uh, the seventh month. Uh, sounds strange, but that's that's the way that's the way it is. Uh, that's how it turned out. Now, uh, f from a Jewish standpoint, when does this when when is that? It's always on. Uh, it's always on what we call the or what what the Jews call the Rosh Hashanah or the uh, 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 Feast of tr Trumpets. It, it's the first feast in the fall, the fall feast. And then they, then 10 days later, you have called the 10 days of awe. Then you have the, the Feast of, uh, of uh, Yom Kippur, uh, which is when, when the, the priest would go into the Holy of Holies. That's the only time that the priest would go into the Holy of Holies is on Yom Kippur. That happens 10 days after the first uh, of the, in the first of the year. And then five days after that begins the Feast of, of, uh, of uh, Sukkot or Tabernacles. Uh, that's when they would build their little booths and so forth and, and live, uh, live, have at least one meal in the booth and they would have uh, uh, fruit and stuff hanging from the, from the thing. I don't, I don't know exactly, I've seen them, but I've never been one. But anyhow, uh, I believe that this, this is the seventh month and it's, and if, if you if you had Jewish friends, they would they would they would send out uh, uh, New Year New Year's cards they, uh, and celebrations to each other over this period of time. So the Jews have two first uh, New Years, uh, early in the spring before the spring feast, and early in the fall before the fall feast. And so I believe that this took place. That's the reason why I I tend to believe that these all of these plagues took period took place over the period of, from, from the fall, excuse me, from the spring feast to the fall feast uh, that happened during this period of time. Uh, and that might be, remember you keep, uh, another reason I say that is because you remember through, as reading this, every time that they go to Pharaoh, they said that we might go and worship, that we might celebrate the feast. And so I believe that they were calling out one of the feasts or more each time he went to Pharaoh. Uh, to to get uh, to ask for his people to be let let go, uh, they were planning on celebrating these feasts. But anyhow, this comes up to the last one of the fall feast. Now, the thing about it is, uh, the only the only you might say backwards that that my theory is here is that it may have taken place. I remember I said a while ago it may have taken place from the fall feast to the spring feast. Uh, over that period of time. That would be like from uh, October to February, somewhere in that neighborhood, if that's when it took place. Because, because you see here, uh, 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 it says here that this, we know that what's gonna take place is gonna be Passover. We know that what's, what's about to take place is gonna be the sacrifice of the, of the lamb, putting the blood on the doorpost and so forth. That's symbolized more so in uh, in, the, in Passover in the early feast. So it could, it's one or the other is, is what I'm saying, uh, which which this is. But anyhow, the seventh month, the fe that feast is considered to be uh, the fall, the, uh, uh, the the new year for the for the Jews, even though there's another new year in the spring. All right, so if I totally confused everybody. All right, well, we're doing pretty good now. I got you all confused. Verse, uh, verse three says, speak, speak ye unto the, the congregation of Israel, saying in the 10th day of this month, they shall take of them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, uh, a lamb of the house. So this is obvious, this is saying this is gonna be a lamb that's taken in the 10th day of the month. Now the 10th day in the fall feast would be Yom Kippur. That's when they would sacrifice the lambs uh, and, uh, uh, for, oh, well, that's when the, the priest would take the goat and, and so forth. But also, and the 10th day of this first month is when, is when uh, the beginning of Passover. So that, that parallels what, what we talk, talked about in, in, uh, in the feast. It says, but in, in, every man is to take a lamb uh, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for, their, for a house. And if, and if the household be too little for the lamb, let him, uh, let him 
and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make uh, you count for, for the lamb. In other words, if you've not got enough people to eat a whole lamb, you need to join with your neighbor or your family or something so that you'll have enough. And the lamb should be enough for the whole, for everybody, uh, for that, for that Passover. And, and your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. And you shall take it out from among the sheep and from the goats. Okay, we got time to continue on. And he says, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it in the evening. All right, you remember we've talked about this before, the, about, the, about the sheep, about taking the lamb. In the 10th day of the month uh, is when, when they were to take a lamb. That's the same day that Jesus entered Jerusalem on the back of the donkey. They were, they were, he presented himself as the lamb to the whole nation or to the whole world for that on that 10th day. And that's when they were supposed to take a lamb here on the 10th of the month uh, for the whole congregation. And it's, and it says, then he says, then you, on the 14th day. So the, the lamb is supposed to stay with them uh, in their house. They examine it, make sure that there's no flaws, blemishes on the, on this lamb until the 14th day. You remember what I've always said? You know, what, what's the, if you got children, what are they going to do? They're going to want to play with that little lamb mm -hmm. uh, in their house. They're going to get attached to it. They're going to love that little lamb before it's over with. And now on the 14th day, they have to slaughter that lamb. Not only do they have to slaughter it, but they have to cook it and have to eat it, or roast it and eat it. And so uh, uh, that's kind of like Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh, and drink my blood, you'll have no part of me. That's what we're doing when we, that's what we do when we assemblize, when we take the Lord's Supper. And ye shall keep it up for the, until the 14th day of the same month. I believe Jesus entered Jerusalem probably at either on, on Saturday, late Saturday, on the 10th, was probably the 10th, until the 14th day, which I believe, you know, I've said before, I believe he was crucified probably either on Wednesday or Thursday, somewhere in that neighborhood. You can count it all out. And another reason I say that is Jesus said, as as the Noah was in the belly of the of the fish for four days and four nights, uh, three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. You can't get three days and three nights from from sundown uh, prior to sundown on Friday until until Sunday morning. You can't do that. There's no way you can get three days and three nights there uh, unless you use uh, unless you use some of the politicians and math, mathematics nowadays. But but anyhow, uh, that's what that's what's what takes place. And uh, it says, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day and of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it and eat it in the evening. Uh, so they're supposed to kill it and eat it. Now, what, there, there are some Jews today that uh, still kill, kill Passover lambs. Uh, but as a general rule, they don't have Passover lamb. They have chicken or something for the Seder meal. They don't have, but I've seen pictures of it. If I can find some, I might share them with you or something. But I've seen pictures of what they do. Uh, they take the lamb and they, uh, they, I guess you could say they skew it on two pieces of wood. There's his, uh, that hyssop wood, I think it is, in Israel, from the hyssop tree, I believe it is. Uh, and it's actually looks, after it's roasted, uh, it, it looks like a, a man on a cross. That's what it looks like. If you look at it, it looks like it's got, it, it's, got its head and its two feet are stretched out on one, one uh, piece of wood. Uh, it's like a stick. And the other one are, are, goes across and it's op opens up its belly and, or its, its inside so that it could be roasted there. And it looks like, almost looks like a man on a, 
on, on a stick that's been roasted. I think it's interesting because it looks a lot like Jesus on the cross when they roast those things. But anyhow, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to take it and eat it. Uh, and we're, I think we're going to have to stop here. It's a quarter after. But I'll try to get you some bit if I can find any. Uh, but I've seen them before, but I don't know uh, how easy it'll be to find them. All right. Any, anybody got any comments, anything you'd like to add? We'll pick it up at 12. I know we went hurriedly over these, these other ones, but there ain't, you know, ain't a lot to say about them other than their plagues. And, uh, then, and, it, it, just, and it, was, it was basically to harden Pharaoh's heart to the point that it would be a miracle that Pharaoh would let him go. Anybody else got any comments? That's the reduce in the spring, right? Yeah, it will be in the spring. So it's very possible that uh, that it was like like for instance, if uh, if it took place over the spring, then then the then the, the feast took place over that other period of time. It's back when they have a uh, uh, what is it uh, uh, feast of lights and the feast of uh, uh, I can't remember the feast for Esther. But the other the other plagues where it's you know destroying the wheat and whatever generally. Wheat is a spring crop. So that's that's kind of. Well, it said it said the spring. It didn't say that the it had killed the flax and the. Didn't destroy the wheat. It didn't, but it didn't that's destroy true. the wheat because it it had not yet been, it had not yet sprouted up or whatever. So it could have been in the fall. Uh, the fla I don't know. I'm not a farmer. When do you when do you plant barley, flax and barley? Barley is. A Crop yeah, barley is early, it's earlier than wheat. So, you know, it's, the flax it's and yeah, but their climate is different there. They're they're different. They're flipped from here. Pardon? The climate would be different. Their spring and fall occurs in different months versus here. No, it's the same as it's ours. The same as here. Yeah, it's the same as ours. Uh, but because uh, they're still on our part of the earth, I mean, they're not on the southern hemisphere. They're on the northern <laughs> hemisphere. But uh, I can't remember time, what. It, how much time would take place between the plagues? Like, we don't know exactly. It's very possible that they the whole year took place. It was a whole year that he was dealing with. We don't know. Could, uh, part of it could have started in the spring, spring one year, and finished in the spring of the next year. Yeah, could have been a whole year. Well, that would make more sense, I guess. Yeah, yeah. could have been. Could have been a long time between, uh, 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 especially between the time of those plagues with the frogs and so forth, cleaning up and all that. And you know, we asked a question that came up last week, I think it was two weeks ago, about where did the animals come from if they'd all been destroyed in a previous plague? Well, it could have been that they were bought or brought in from somewhere else. We don't know. I would have given them time to do that. Uh, anything else? Well, let's all stand. We'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, we, again we praise you and we thank you uh, that that you have uh, you have redeemed us and you have you have uh, paid the price uh, to to set us free, just as you paid the price uh, for setting. Uh, Israel free and, and sending the plagues upon Egypt. You have destroyed destroyed our enemy and given us new life and we just praise you Father for it. We ask that you be with us now as we go into the worship service. Everything will be said and done. We'll bring glory, honor, and praise to your name. And we'll just praise you Father for it. And uh, Father, we just ask that you'll uh, be with those on our prayer list again and also that you'll be with uh, our pastor as he brings the message. Uh, if anybody has an unspoken or a special need or request, we ask that you meet it according to your will. And we'll thank you again, Father, for it. Pray, pray now a blessing over everyone here. Yavarechacha Adonai Vaish Marecha. Yaer Adonai Panavilecha Vilkaneka. Yasa Adonai Panavilecha Vesimlecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Peace. As always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.